This is Car Deck Radio for Teens. And now it's time for Message from a Teen in the Spirit World with your hosts, Mark Smith and Carol Correa. Hello, friends! We are back again with another beautiful message from a teen in the Spirit Realm. As you know, our dear Carlos has been learning a lot about himself and about life in general as he adapts to his new reality as a discarnate spirit. Today we are going to understand more about how powerful prayer is as Carlos himself engages in consciously connecting with the divine creator for the first time as a discarnate spirit. Let us listen to Carlos' experience, not only with the ears of the physical body, but of the heart of the spirit, so that the truths that are shared here can once and for all nourish our souls, so that we can remember that we too are spirits in progress and so that we can be ever more grateful to our Father, Mother, God, who provides us with constant opportunities to feel loved and to be loved as loving sons and daughters of the Creator that we all are. So let us celebrate life in both realms by listening to Carlos' beautiful account. At prayer. On the first night after my improvement, I was with Grandma and Aunt Eunice in the biggest room of their home. Beautiful moonlight was bathing the garden outside, and the soft, clear lamp inside was like a huge heart shaped pearl. Grandma glanced at the clock and invited us to prayer, explaining that now was the appropriate time. We gathered around a big table in whose center graciously rested a vase of red flowers, much like carnations. After a few minutes of silence, during which Grandma Adelia asked me to think good thoughts, Aunt Eunice offered a beautiful prayer out loud, asking Jesus to help and enlighten us, as always, and to help us be worthy of the Eternal Father's blessings. When she had finished, I was startled at seeing a nearby mirror begin to light up marvelously, as if it were receiving a strong projection of golden light from some unknown place. In a few moments, the image of a captivating woman appeared speaking to us. Grandma and Aunt Eunice listened closely to her while I gazed in awe. Having overcome my initial surprise, I began listening, fascinated by the beauty of her wisdom-filled lessons and comments although I couldn't grasp the meaning of everything she was talking about. Her optimistic mood, however, was admirable and contagious. With noteworthy serenity and an excellent display of cheerfulness, she was speaking through us through a TV-like apparatus, just as if she were there in person three steps away. Besides the priceless instruction she brought us, she more fervently commented on our need to understand the higher designs before anything else, with the firm decision to mold ourselves according to them within the spirit of service. She wisely explained that everything happens to us for the good if we don't place ourselves in the deplorable condition of rebellious and stubborn individuals. Listening to her, I honestly felt encouraged and cheerful. I got the idea that this visitor from afar, was radiating waves of peace that profoundly comforted my soul and increased my hopes in the sublime future. In those few minutes, I felt that my faith had grown a lot, which in turn intensified my inner optimism and trust. When the golden light in the crystalline mirror finally disappeared, Aunt Eunice told me that twice per week the homes in the village were put in contact with high-level instructors and governors from our new realm of work by means of TV-like and radio-like devices. I couldn't contain my obvious joy. When I went to bed, 
Grandma Delia told me that on the next day I would be taken to the children's complex from where I'm writing you this letter. Dear friends, how beautiful it is for us to not only hear but also feel the beautiful loving presence of the Creator and how tangible this presence is because the Creator, our Mother, Father, God, the Supreme Intelligence of the Universe makes himself, herself, itself available to us through beautiful servants of love, through spirits who are like tutors or mentors to all of us, who encourage us, who guide us, who give us literal injections of optimism, who know of the power of the thoughts that we constantly create. As Allah Kardec taught us in the book, the Genesis chapter 14, we, when we think and therefore pray, because prayer is a communion, communion of thoughts from the heart. So when we think and therefore pray, we emit photographs of our thoughts. And that is such in every single circumstance of our lives. So this is why our master and guide, Jesus, has told us to live in a way so that we are in constant prayer, that is to make of our own life an act of prayer. Because the more we harbor the good in the gardens of our hearts, the more we feel the good, the more we think the good, and the more we realize the good. So the question for us is, are we ready to experience the joy that Carlos mentions in that passage that joy dear friends is real tangible and available to all of us all of us have a network that goes beyond facebook or twitter the network that we are referring to is our spiritual network the minds that have been accompanying us the hearts that have been connected to ours for centuries and centuries, and that observe us, encourage us, stimulate us to move forward, or observe us to see if we have changed our course of behavior or not. So the question for us is, if we want to experience this joy that the Creator makes available to us, are we ready, willing, and able to harbor thoughts of joy and optimism, that takes work, dear friends. Like we have observed with Carlos, we don't automatically, without any effort, become perfect. How do we harbor perfection? And of course, we are speaking of relative perfection because God is the only perfect source of love in the universe. So how do we achieve that a relative perfection through time, repetition, and effort. How can we then cultivate thoughts of love in our hearts? By replacing negative thoughts with beautiful, more positive thoughts. And that is a daily exercise and prayer, as you have heard, can be one of the instruments that help us to recalibrate ourselves, to redirect our will so that we are in better connection, better alignment with the Creator who is the one and ultimate source of love. The source of love is so abundant that when we connect to it through prayer and through thoughts, we feel elevated literally sometimes we may feel as though we are about to fly because our vibrations change and the energy around us change and if we change others may consequently not because of us but because of god's love also change this is why a wise spirit gandhi invited us to be the change that we want to see in the world. 
And as we have observed, dear friends, Carlos has already been experiencing these major changes. He's learning to feel loved by the Creator. So we invite ourselves and all of you to practice this beautiful act of communion with God, not only through prayer, but through cultivating beautiful, loving thoughts about yourself and about others. One way of doing so is to repeat affirmations to yourself. For example, I am loved, loving, and lovable. I love and approve of myself, and I know what to do. I know how to fulfill God's will, and I am a joyful, beautiful spirit in progress. So let us practice this, dear friends, affirming ourselves so that in communion with the Creator through thoughts, we can literally wear thoughts of joy, of love, and of optimism like our dear Carlos is learning at the moment. He can be uh, one of our many role models but the ultimate role model is Jesus Christ. So let us now ask Mark to say a beautiful prayer in gratitude for this wonderful role model who reincarnated on earth to show us the pathway of illumination. Thank you, dear Jesus, for once again reminding us of the power of prayer and for teaching us about prayer, for giving us so much that we can do to commune with you and with the higher spirits, for teaching us that it is through prayer that we are able to see the world in a new way, to connect to the spiritual energy that's all around us. And by helping us to do that, we can transform not only our own lives, but the lives of others. Thank you, Jesus, for being there all the time to remind us that your love is all around and that everyone is capable of transforming their lives if only we practice the beautiful gift of prayer that you taught us so kindly to do. Thank you, Jesus, and so be it. So be it, and let us make an effort this week, dear friends, to nourish our souls by consciously connecting our hearts to the hearts of those who love us beyond the physical realm. Let us celebrate life beyond what the eyes can see, and let us feel this embrace of gratitude that is coming upon us as we wish you many, many, many beautiful blessings until we meet again for another message from a team in the spirit realm. This has been Kardec Radio for Teens. Thank you all for listening.